Yeah, so the, the technology game has been accelerated probably by a decade in terms of the opportunities. Said differently, corporates, and I'm going to argue governments, were slow in the adoption of technology that actually could better the world that we are living in today. COVID forced them to move fast and take away any of the internal hurdles that got in the way of moving forward with that kind of speed. There was a lot of lessons learned in this regard. The three lessons learned come back to a couple of points. Number one, how do you think about not the technology, but the change you're trying to drive? Second, how do you actually get your workforce, the citizens of the countries we're talking to, to be participatory in that change? not necessarily be those that are, ben are actually resulting from the change. They gotta participate in driving that change. And in order to do that, it gets to the third point, which is do they have the skill sets are necessary for the future? Here, I truly believe we PwC and the studies we've done truly believe government cannot do this by themselves. And in fact, the corporates working with governance have to do much more as we think about the educational process for employees today that worry about their jobs tomorrow future employees that are coming, and equally as important, the youth, the youth of the world to participate in this change. All three of those things have to be addressed as we think about skilling, upskilling, and the transformation of skills necessary to participate in this change in a much more inclusive way. So big lesson learned because of the change. Last point I wanna make, over history, we've gone through three, four, five systematic seismic shifts in terms of how talent is used and managed. You can go back to industrial revolution, you can go to the plague. I truly believe this is gonna be one of those times. We've got a lot of experimenting to do. If anybody's thinking about the labor force and different ways to attack that opportunity, I'm gonna argue they're wrong. We're gonna to have to experiment for a period of time before we come out of this with a new norm. But let's remind ourselves to reflect on the past, Let's reflect then after on what we learned during COVID, but let's apply it to create that new world. And it really comes back to the S in the ESG agenda. Are we doing what's necessary to actually serve society so the individuals and the collective groups and the communities that are underprivileged and underserved can actually participate in a way that we haven't done in the last 10 or 20 years? Yeah, it's a great point. When a crisis hits, that often makes room for innovation. And now, as you say, as we build back better with ESG components, um, that could really lead to us achieving as a world some of the big goals that we have around the environment. What about the digital divide, Bob? This is a common theme that comes up on CNBC. I know at this summit, what does it mean for stakeholders across the region? Yeah, it's clear that coming out of COVID and well before COVID, we were already moving towards this digital divide. And you saw it from the underserved countries in terms of some of the communities that did not have access to, to education and technology. You now see it even more so um, in terms of the gender issue with women actually, uh, unfortunately, not participating in the upside potential that's out there and not being in the game relevant to labor force, no, no cause of their own by all means. The reality is more needs to be done by government to actually figure out ways to connect with those groups, give them good quality content in terms of educational opportunities, make sure that there's enough entrepreneurship and innovation to create jobs for the supply that hopefully we're creating. And last but not least, let's get the youth more engaged in the change. They are smart, they are equipped to help, they can actually not only benefit from the change, but actually they can help drive the change. And especially when you look at some of the parts of the world that we're talking to today, I think there's a lot more opportunity for the youth to be part of the equation. I'm part of this organization called Generation Unlimited, which is an offshoot of UNICEF, and we focus on those four things. The idea is to get to hundreds of millions of, of people at the youth level, and then figure out those learnings and apply them and scale them in a big consistent way across the globe, because the entire world, no matter if it's developed or undeveloped, needs this kind of focus going forward. And as you know, Seema, it's a crowded agenda right now.